All right, welcome to our first episode of Lightning Locks. I'm joined by Larson Griffith here on this show. It's going to be a daily show, Monday through Friday. We're going to give you our best bets of the day. Run them down as fast as we can. Larson, I know you got some picks that you like for us. Uh, college basketball tournament starting. A lot of stuff on the slate. Give me your most confident pick of the night. My most confident uh, pick today is a profitable system. It is a system that has won for over 20 years. And it's in conference tournaments when a team, uh, it, it can be one team or both teams, but when one of the teams is on their third game in three days, you take the under. And so today you get uh, Delaware and UNC Wilmington in the Colonial Championship. Under 134, they've both played three days in a row. And, you know, you're bound to have some tired legs. Um, this is a system I actually, I bet it every March and it, and it wins. It's a winning system. So my most confident pick today, I'm taking that Delaware UNC Wilmington under 134. And then uh, I'm also going to play the first half under because you can't get enough unders. And so I got first half under 62 and a half, um, the full game under. If you just bet, seriously, just bet those unders, like you're going to make a lot of money March. in March. Yeah. <laughs> Third game in three days, fourth game in four days, whatever it is. But fine, you can yeah. find them and it's going to be a winner. So that's my most confident one today for sure. Yeah, and we'll see we'll see a lot of those in this upcoming tournament. A I ton. mean, all these teams will yeah. be running uh, third games, four games. So my confidence, I'm going to go to the ice. The ice have been profitable for me over the last few months, so that's where I'm going to stick with right now. When we get a little more into March, I'm not going to lie, college basketball, I watch LSU, my squad. I watch some SEC basketball, and I watch some big games here and there. But like it's not it's not my cup of tea until March. So like I have to learn about all these teams in like a two week period. So this is about the time where I'll be watching every game and then I'll make my evaluations from there. So right now I'm going to stick with the ice. And because this is the lightning lock, my most confident pick is going to be the lightning tonight. Yes. Uh, hold up one second. I totally just blanked who they're, who they're playing. <laughs> oh, Winnipeg Jets. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets, a solid team. Uh, to be honest, you know, in March, we're getting down to the, the point in the hockey season where every game matters. Uh, Lightning are firmly in the playoff race, but they're still looking for one of the top seeds. Uh, Winnipeg's kind of kind of on the way back. They do need some wins. They are at home. But this is one of those games where, you know, I'm, t I'm not overthinking it. I'm taking one of the best teams in hockey against an average team in hockey. Um, they haven't played so far this year. Uh, and I just have a few. And uh, Lightning, I think they're on two, two or three days of rest. Uh, so no, no rest issues. Uh, and you get them in rag at a good price at minus 110. I think typically a game like this, you'd be looking at at least a mi minus 130, minus 150. Uh, if you want money line, uh, I, you could take that. I think they're minus 165, which isn't too bad, especially for a lightning game. But uh, yeah, I would definitely, I think lightning and rag, that, that, that's a very confident pick. I, I've already bet it so far. I've already bet it so far, and I will be on that heavy tonight. All right. I trust I trust your hockey insight much, much more than mine. Um, I'll stay, I'll stay college basketball for my second one. I'm, I'm going to take Bryant today. They're in the Northeast conference championship. They play Wagner. Um, Bryant was the one seed. So they, they host the whole tournament, every game for them's at home. Um, and I bet on them before uh, to win the tournament. It was minus one Oh five. I love the value there. I mean, for a team that is the one seed and, and can play every game at home, I'll take that all the time. And I want to say, I believe they're minus four today against Wagner, but Bryant's the better team. Bryant's at home. You play for an automatic, uh, you know, tournament berth. So, you know, these teams go hard and to have the home crowd behind you will be big. Um, so I've already bet it. I, I bet them to win the tournament before, so I'm not going to take the minus four, but technically I have their money line, um, which was like minus 190. So I like that a lot. I'm always going to, I'm always going to get like a good home team and a big game like that. Yeah, uh, it's easy. I mean that's that's not typical. Why why are they playing at home? Is it just? The, it's the like the state? smaller conferences. Like the smaller conferences play like the ones like they'll play whatever the higher seat is is at home. So you know, you take that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm big. I mean, when I when I bet on, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna go all underdogs, but I do think in the conference tournaments, especially with the the higher seeds and the bigger tournaments that still have talent on their rosters. You know, uh, I'm trying. Oh, yeah. I mean, like an like an Ole Miss in the SEC. You know, like right. they have some talent to upset you. You know, those I do like those dogs because they're fighting for their lives. It's yeah. like I'm not going to say they're going to win, but if you're going to give them 13 points in a conference championship game, like I'll That's take ridiculous. those 13 points because Absolutely. that team's 
because that team's fighting for their damn lives, you know. So yeah. that, that's something I always like to look for and in the conference tournaments. You know, the March Madness is a is a cra- is a crazy is a crazy puzzle to solve. Anything but the, can happen. But the uh, the conference tournaments uh, that those are plays that I like. Uh, I'm sticking on the ice for my next pick. Uh, we'll go with uh, all these other ones are, are pretty even. I, I like the Knights and Reg too, basically for the same reason I like I like the Tampa Tampa Bay and Reg. The Knights really need this win, and they're playing a a bad team. And the and the Philadelphia Flyers, who they're at home, but home ice and hockey is kind of it's not like home ice and basket it's not like home court in basketball or home court in you know our home field in football. You know, it's probably one of the least matters. I mean, some teams you'll see a big discrepancy in their wins, but you know the Flyers are one of the worst teams in hockey. They're ten, fifteen, and five. So basically, it's, they're essentially ten and twenty at home. Uh, again, if you want to take the money line, if you're a pussy, take the money line. But I think Knights and Rag. I think that's a game that they're fresh. Uh, they need it to win, uh, to uh, get up in the standings. And like I said, you know, don't overthink these kind of bets. I'm taking the Knights all day. Uh, I'll go I'll go another one before you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, this is one that's going to be interesting. Um, the Rangers uh, play the Wild. Um, I just told you a crazy story about the Wild, how they play the Stars. It turned out like 6-3 because they pulled the Nets. The thing about the Wild is, you know, they uh, they're a good team. They played really poorly of late, especially defensively. And I'm looking at the Rangers team total over here, two and a half at minus 130. Uh, I really like it. Uh, I think the Wild are going to come out buzzing. Um, they, they've lost four of their last five. They've given up f- uh, four or more goals in all of those games, and they've given up seven a couple, which is kind of atypical. Uh, the Rangers don't have a great offense. They lean on Shesterkin, who's arguably the best goalie in hockey. Uh, I don't even know if he's going to start tonight. That's definitely something to keep your eye on. But regardless, I like the Rangers over two and a half. Uh, they only scored two in their, this last matchup when they played earlier in the season. I don't really think that matters that much because I just feel like this the wild team, this wild defense is, has really gone out the window in the last five games. I think the wild are going to need to score if they want to win. And, and I just see this. I kind of like the over six in this one, which, which is rare because in Rangers games, they play a lot of tight games. Uh, and most people bet the under. Uh, I kind of like the over six, especially if Sisterkin doesn't play. And I love the Rangers over two and a half in that one. Hopefully, you get a uh, an empty net at the end of that one. Yeah, I mean, see, that's yeah. the thing. When never know when you have when you have two and a half goals. Like if Sisterkin is in there, it could e- I could easily see the game being two one, um, and an empty netter get pouring in for three. But uh, like I just think this one. I have a feel. I have a gut feeling this is going to be three three in the third and go to overtime. I don't know why. That's just the gut feeling. And if you bet Rangers over two and a half, and if you have over six, you win both ways. I'll probably see if Shostak is going to play to play that over six. Um, but Rangers over two and a half, I like a lot. The Wild's defense has just been a mess lately, and I don't see that changing. Um, and it, it really giving up three goals isn't even that many. So I like that a lot. All right, good, good, good. There, I'm going to go. Uh... Done with basketball, but I'll take you to English soccer, something that has been my forte recently. I have been hot in English soccer. I, I, I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's like it's, if I'm lucky or I don't know. We're going to take that. We have a classic like top team playing the worst team in the English championship. <laughs> it's Bournemouth is playing Peterborough United. So Peterborough United, they're the, the worst team in the league. They're at the very bottom of the table. They have not won a league game since December 11th, and they've lost seven out of their last eight. So they're just in dreadful, dreadful form. They're already getting relegated. They know it. They're going down to the next league. Bournemouth, though, they're fighting to get promoted to the Premier League. That's like the the mass, most massive thing in soccer. So they're fighting for that. They've won four out of their last five league games, so they're playing really well. And they're at home where they have been much better. Peterborough, like they suck, but they can't win on the road either. So – um, I checked the money line. It was a, it was like minus three fifty. It's like something massive. I'm not willing to do that, but I will take the spread. I'll take Bournemouth minus one and a half um, to win by basically two or more. It was minus one forty. Um, I like that one. I actually bet that one last night because I mean they, they really should, should kill this team. Um, anything can happen in that league. It's a, it's a really crazy league, but I mean, golly, it would be just brutal for Bournemouth if you're fighting for your lives and you lose a game of the worst yeah. team. I, I couldn't see it. If it happens, I applaud, you know, Peterborough, good job. And I move on, but <laughs> I'll lay one forty. That should be an easy one. I think. That, see, that's funny. That's funny. I mean, that is some true, true degenerate gambling right there. Betting yes. on championship league 
uh, English soccer. Not I like it. Not you, you can find League. some good value. You can find some really oh, good value I, in those games. I, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, you look. I mean, you look at sports that I think are the hardest to bet: like NBA, NFL. Um, yeah, I think it's hard to find value in a lot of those games because they're being bet all over. That's kind of why I made my way to the NHL, especially with the MLB lockout and everything happening. I was like, you know, I'm going to see what this is all about. And you get every game on ESPN+. Plus. I highly, I highly suggest everyone that is watching this show to at least give NHL a shot. If you don't have a team, pick one. And if you don't want to pick one, just start betting on every game. And you'll all of a sudden be like, I am hooked on this shit. Because I'm, I'm not kidding, like 95% of games come down to the last like 35 seconds. And like it's like empty netters and six on fives and four on sixes. It's 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 exhilarating, especially if you have money on it. You these over unders, which I'm about to give you two over unders to wrap up my slate. Yeah, and it's really two of the best offensive teams, the Leafs and the Avalanche, against two of the worst teams in hockey, the Devils and the Kraken. The Avalanche and Leafs both played uh, last night, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Devils and Kraken gave them a run for their money. Um, even though they're t- they're two of the worst teams in hockey. But I do I, I just think there's no way the Leafs and Avalanche don't put up at least four goals. Uh, they should each put up four goals against the the Kraken and the Devils. So then you're just asking, you know, for for the Devils or the Kraken to put up three or or two and and one. I have Leafs Kraken over six, Avalanche to Avalanche. Devils over six and a half. So I see both of those games going over. It wouldn't surprise me at all um, if this Avalanche Devils game was like six to three uh, and, and the Leafs crack and Leafs have one of the best offenses in hockey uh, and they, they don't play defense worth the shit. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if that one was like seven to five. I mean, the Leafs played a game, I think four or five games ago where it was 10 to seven against the Red Wings. You do not have a good offense. So it wouldn't surprise me at all coming off a, a back to back where they're traveling if this game was like eight to seven. So I think Leafs, Leafs cracking over avalanche devils over six and a half. Uh, I think you'll make some money on those two. All right. I like those. I, if we don't have baseball, I mean, this is the tough part. If we don't have MLB, which I actually really enjoyed betting last year. I, I yeah. Don't, like, what do I do? I go to hockey. Maybe I go to college baseball. I, I mean, you I, can I go to hockey. I mean, you can go to hockey, but I mean, okay. hockey ends before the MLB or before the NBA. So you'll be done. It, by by the middle, you'll be done by, you know, middle of June. Um, so it's rough. Yeah, it, it, there's not going to be a lot of stuff to bet on. It's going to be true, like find out who the true degenerates yeah. are. They can go pick out some stuff in some like international leagues and stuff like that. I have a feeling, though, by the time baseball or by, by the time basketball and hockey are over in June, we'll ha- at least have baseball. But yeah, uh, I don't I would I would definitely think I, I think I think we're looking at a canceled April and I hope we have games starting in May, maybe mid-May. That, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking, but who knows? I've well, been wrong this whole time. Rob Manfred has shown that he really is like determined to get this done. Wait, no, wait, never mind. No, he hasn't. He's <laughs> he's the worst. He kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I've talked about this on a million different podcasts. So I really just, I, I get tired of it, but I think both sides yeah, are, are, are kind of been very disappointing and their lack of, really just understanding of what the fans want, what the fans think, what, what's good for the game. Like mm-hmm. I, I understand players think they're fighting for what's right. And for the younger generation and shit, like, and for the growth of the game, like you realize that's absolute horseshit. Like you're fighting to line your own pockets, like, and yeah. nothing okay. about what you're doing right now is helping the game of baseball for the younger generation. Nothing's uh, it just nothing about what you're doing is helping. So I, I think both sides are ridiculous. I think the owners acted in bad faith. So I understand why the players are upset. But uh, at this point, it's just a bunch of nonsense. So who knows? Yeah. But I, I, it's got to end. It's got to end. There's no way they miss a whole season. It would be, <laughs> it would, would be, I mean, it would be just, de- it would be detrimental. I mean, you would lose legitimate oh, it would, fans. It, right. You, it would be the worst. You would lose legitimate fans. I mean, I'm a psychopath and I write about the team. Like I'm a diehard Braves fan. So I probably would still watch if they missed the whole season. But I think you could, you could lose 50% of actual fans if you just can't, if you, went on and argued like this for a whole season and thought that you were like doing something for the good of the game. But that's neither here nor here. Let me give me, no, I, let's get your, let's get your last, let's get your last picks. My last picks. I think, I think I just have those, <clears throat> those four, but. Okay, are you already I, done? I, I think I'm done with the, with just those four. Do you, do you have any more? You have any more hockey? No, 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 no. That, that wraps it up. I mean, if I want to, if y'all want some free, I'm not going to put, we're going to be keeping our records here so you can, you know, fade us if we, if we play like shit, but ones that aren't on the board that I'm just kind of leaning, 
Like I would lean towards Calgary, and, and especially if you're up late at night, that game starts at nine. You know, maybe you get a little bored. Uh, I like the Blues team t- total over three and a half. Uh, I also think you know taking a, the Blues money line or Blues and Reg is a pretty easy bet. Uh, I like the Panthers against Pittsburgh, even though they're traveling on a back to back. I still think Florida is a better team there, and they lost to Pittsburgh earlier in the season, so a little revenge spot. Uh, Pittsburgh will have fresh legs three days on three days of rest. That's why I didn't want to put it on the board, but I still think Florida is the better team. Uh, other than that, I think that, that that's pretty much it. I think I'm, I I didn't play it. I thought about I thought about betting it and keeping it in, but the Clippers tonight are plus six at the Warriors, who Warriors will not have Steph. Will not have Clay. Will not have Wiggins. I don't think Gary Payton's playing. Like, and, and it's a very depleted night. Warriors. And they played and last they night, played and they've lost. Night. I think eight of their last like ten. Yeah, yeah. They, they're I mean, struggling. The Clippers back. can go win that game. I don't get that line, but so maybe it's a little a little fishy. Maybe it's a trap. That's but yeah. That I, that actually might know. be an NBA game. I might I might throw a little cash yeah. on because that that's definitely even though it's fishy, it's like, I don't care if I lose on that one, I'll take it. Like that's just, too... I might just go money line, go Clippers money line. Yeah. I might. Win that game. Right, well, that wraps it up for our first episode. We'll be back tomorrow. I appreciate everyone for listening. I hope we get some winners and, and, and get a little following here because we're just nasty at gambling. <laughs>